anybody can cook, but to cook well, you need to know how to deal with so many different situations. How to trade well, you need to know how to deal with those situations. You know, oh, pan's too hot. Well, you know, cut it. Let's start again. Oh, this is moving too fast. Don't enter that trade. And it's learning those little minutiae. Like I said, it's easy to make a lot on trade, but how to make a little bit on trade consistently is you know, really where you're going to want to. Rose, my man, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. You've been with me for a while. You and I have had so many different conversations about so many different topics, and I, and I really appreciate your time today for me to be able to ask you some questions regarding myself, the Discord, and our relationship as, it's, as it stands currently and, and what we've been through in the past. And, again, thank you so much for your time. Ah, pleasure to be here. All right, let's get right into it. So first question is, where did you begin your background in trading and understanding the market? So it really goes back, um, I could, we could probably go on for hours on this, but um, came from an investing family, they've always been in the markets. Um, my late uncle was a day trader, um, he passed away before I sort of got into this. But the real long and the short of it is after I uh, got out of college, came back from Europe, had to start finding jobs, started working in insurance, and then I started working in banking. And really when I started in banking, that's uh, the thing you do. You know, you get in, you get your first office, you get your first business cards, and you open your first brokerage account. Because uh, believe it or not, when you're not writing up loans and opening up you know, kids' check, kids savings accounts and adult checking accounts, everyone's up. Oh, I'll pick up this fund. Oh, you see the healthcare fund here doing this? And that's really where I got it. You know, just started legging into funds because we're selling mutual funds, but we're all investing in ETFs and on the brokerage side, you know, trying to pick up some stock tips. So uh, from there, that was about, almost about 10 years ago now. And from there, it was just uh, work on my own, work on my own, brokerage, brokerage, brokerage. And then um, after I left my last bank, I took some, time, took some time, and then I started working actually at a startup brokerage. And from there, just being surrounded by uh, young advisors, old advisors, analysts, front end, back end, um, you know, it was going great, and then the COVID crash happened, and I made a lot of fast money riding the wave back up, uh, you know, in May and June of 2020, and that's really what kind of sparked me into loving, you know, this market. Uh, well, I appreciate that. You've got a lot of experience, a very comprehensive background, so I, I, I could not be more excited to ask the rest of the questions, so thank you for that very much. Uh, follow up for that would be what steps did you take to further that understanding and you know I know your background aided in that and did you join any groups or have a mentor along the way that helped guide you in that process so it, you know from the beginning it really was just surrounding yourself with the right people having those right conversations um, one of my ex-girlfriends her dad made a joke and it said you know go to his family dinners so because you'll probably pick up more stock tips sitting there for three hours than you would go go to an investing seminar all weekend because you know we're just all around it and then um after the brokerage and i decided to you know really try this on my own i really started interviewing and you know instagram's great checking out some discords checking out what communities are there and you know i kind of didn't do the vetting i should have and i got lucky that we met up but for the most part you know there's so many talking heads out there um you know whether it's watching bloomberg whether it's watching you know, CNBC, there's just so much that's trying to help disseminate and you know, really filter that information. Um, that's that's incredible. And, and surrounding yourself around the right people is exactly what I'm trying to do, which is why I'm so thankful I have you and many others in our Discord and our live calls every day. So I, I can really appreciate that perspective. So two-part question. How long have you known me? And what has been your perspective slash experience from the Discord and live calls with me since you've been, since you and I first met? So I think we would have first met probably about January of this year. Um, you know, I really started going into this full time. Uh, it was about January. I took a little time off uh, when my daughter was born. I took a little time off this summer. Uh, but really, you know, third off is just a place to be, a uh, place to hang out, a little chat to have because trading's lonely. And you know, as much as they say it's a community and this and that, it's a lot of people. They're staring at screens. Even when I work in offices, even when I work for brokerages, you know, the world nowadays is it's us and our computers and whatever connections you make. So the ability to have a group call, have a little chat, 
have someone give you a little direction. And a lot of times, you just need someone to talk to. And so, you know, you always straight shooting, always talk about, you know, what's looking up, what's looking down, and just hearing that perspective. You know, that, that's what I've always got is, you know, you call it as you see it, whether we agree with it, whether we disagree with it. You know, you try to be, you know, as straight as you can with the way you see things. And, you know, not everyone's going to agree with it, but you got to hear it, you got to hear perspective. Well, I appreciate that very much, and I'll continue to do that, right? I, there are things that it, it's incredible to have your perspective because I'll, I'll say something, whether it may be direct or maybe off the cuff, and you'll have a different perspective for me immediately. Sometimes you and I agree on it wholeheartedly, and we'll send each other messages back and forth because of that agreement. Uh, or, you know, somebody says something, and you go, eh, I, don't know if, uh, I don't know if that's right. You might want to wanna, wanna do a little double take on that, reconsider what just came out of your mouth, which I appreciate helps me. Helps me stay in check, and I, I really do appreciate that. So, um, next question would be: Do you feel as though you can ask myself questions at any time during the live call? Do you have free communication, open communication with me at any time? You know, I've, I've never had an issue stepping up. I've never had an issue asking you anything. You know, I think you've really helped the culture that there, there are no dumb questions. Uh, maybe there's dumb people, but there really are no dumb questions because the other part too is if you're thinking that question. Someone else probably is thinking it too. You know, there's so much about uh, the technicals and the and not even technical data, but like this little minutia of you know trading these markets. You know, how do you, you know? There's you know stop loss, a stop limit. Like now, it's just like, oh yeah, of course I know the difference. But you know, market fills. You know, we were talking earlier about slippage, and that's something that we all know, we all deal with. But you know, it's just gonna, it's having that ability to bring those up and. You know, outside of something, you know, there's certain things that we try to draw limits on, but, you know, I, you know, don't think there's anything that's not accept, you know, not acceptable to ask. Whether it deserves an answer or not, that can always be a different question, but, you know, having the ability to ask those questions, of course, you know, it, it's what makes the live call different from just sitting there and watching eight hours of a YouTube video talking to you versus talking with you. Right. No, absolutely, and I appreciate that very much. So from when you started your investment journey to present day, what have been some of the major changes? Um, so I think number one is risk management. Uh, you know, you get into this and you're just like, ah, oh, I'll throw some money in a brokerage, oh, I'll, grab some, I'll grab some signals, oh, I'll make a quick 20% a day on my investment, boom, you know, you drive, you drive in a Lambo, what color is your Bugatti? And the truth is, if you can't consistently make $50 a day, you're not going to consistently make $100 a day, or $500 a day, or $5,000 a day. And, you know, it's the biggest, hardest thing I've learned is, you know, proper risk. It's, you can blow, you can, it takes you months, it takes you weeks to build an account. And I looked over and I would have blown up an account in the morning, you know, and, you know, it's having that people there. And, you know, uh, someone the other day in live call, they were saying, oh, yeah, I like trading Tesla. And someone else said, well, why? It's like, it's going to make money on Tesla. But, it's a, but why? Give me some logic. And I thought, I'm like, well, wait, why do I trade Tesla? Well, it moves. It used to move. Now it just chops. So it's having someone there that, you know, that little Jimmy Cricket on your shoulder, it's really nice. And the more you talk, no one's afraid to call you out on things. But if I say, oh, I picked up Tesla because it's gone directional, because this in China, well, that makes sense. It's like, yeah, go for it. But it's always nice to have that little sounding board. And as I said earlier, this is a lonely, lonely thing to do. <coughs> Sometimes uh, being alone with your own thoughts is the worst thing It's sitting in front of a broken account. Right. No, that, that's phenomenal. I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I think it's very valuable that we have a very, very open community and a very open live call. You can speak your mind. And if somebody disagrees with you, we're very respectful and we try to maintain that. But we also want to make sure that under no circumstance would you not be able to speak your mind, you know, regardless of what it is that you decide to speak on. So I appreciate that perspective again. Uh, what do you need help with the most, whether it be working with me, working with the Centurion Education Group, or just as an individual? So I know for me, the biggest thing is, is consistency. And for me to get good consistency, it's working on you know, stepping back not trading. And when you're just sitting there, sounds off, maybe the music's on, whatever, sitting in the brokerage, you see, you know, the charts go up, charts go down, you want to go click on click. And, you know, the key is not over trading. It's trading less. I'm pretty sure 
today I took one trade and it might not be the biggest dollar gain, but mathematically it's one of the best days I've had in a long time for an hour and a half's worth of work. I timed it right. Should I held longer? Maybe, but you know, it's working on you know, how do I hold the trade right? How do I enter? You know, it's easy to get into trades, but entering a trade well is incredibly hard. And exiting trades, super easy. You click the button, but you know, do I hold through here? Where do I set a trail through here? You know, it's how do you how do you perfect the art of the trade? Because honestly, it's like it's like everything else in the world. Anybody can cook, but to cook well, you need to know how to deal with so many different situations. How to trade well, you need to know how to deal with those situations. You know, oh, hands too hot. Well, you know, cut it. Let's start again. Oh, this is moving too fast. Don't enter that trade. It is learning those little minutiae. Like I said, it's easy to make a lot on trade, but how to make a little bit on trade consistently is you know really where you're going to want to. That, that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. So, follow up to that would be how was your trading? How has your trading and understanding of the market changed since you and I first met and throughout our relationship? So, definitely since I first met, it, you know, for me, it was very much long holds. You know, what's your feeling? How are your technical? Oh, this seems to have good management. You know, it's a lot of it's the, the I don't know of trading. You know, oh, I think I know this, I know that. You know, and everyone got a different perspective. And, you know, some people like charting, some people like fundamentals, some are very technical, some John Elliott waves, some, you know, just, you know, look to the stars. Uh, and, you know, I think the big thing since we've met is, you know, it's, I've started to disseminate down and be consistent with what I'm looking at, how I'm looking at it. When we first started, I wanted every single line, bar, indicator, chart, RSI, momentum, stochastic. You know, it's honestly, it was a dog's dinner looking at my charts. And, you know, it's what makes sense to you? What, what talks to you? And yeah, do I like moving averages? Kind of. Do they help me tell me something for situation? Yes. And, you know, talking with you and, and being in the mornings is, you know, you look at certain things for certain things. Oh, I'm looking at 52 weeks. I'm looking at one week. I'm looking at ranges. Uh, I'm looking at pivots. And it's, you know, what information do you disseminate? What do you get rid of? You know, you can sit there watching CNBC all morning, but what do I need to know? What are the bullets? What are the points out of this that are going to affect me, whether it's for the next minute, five minutes, hour, or day, or week, or month, or year even? So, you know, it's how do you, how do you send the information? What do you ignore? Because that's the thing. It's all noise. Right. And other discords I've been in, it's noise. You know, you turn off your notifications because it's just, uh, you know, it's just verbal diarrhea coming through these, toxicity, uh, no respect, people just talking for the sake of talking. And, it's, you know, really how to disseminate down what information you need is valuable and you can take and work with. Right. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So have uh, any of your habits, whether daily, weekly, or through trading, what have you, uh, have any of them changed since you met me and, and speaking with me on a daily basis in a live call? So I think the number one thing I learned was is you don't need to trade eight hours a day. You know, this is not something, you don't need to get, a, get there 30 minutes before market opens. You don't need to hammer till 30 minutes after market closes. You know, it's when is prime time? When is the volatile times? And when is time to walk away? You know, some, yeah, some days I'll trade all day, I'll sit open to close, but for the most part, you know, there is, you know, make sure you prepare for the day. You know, if I'm not getting on half an hour, 45 before, I don't go on Discord, I don't want to log in, but I want to get my charts up. I want to get my programs running. I want to get my Google Sheets up. I want to make sure I got a cup of coffee, I got my water filled up. I'm going to sure I'm in the right place to trade because jumping out of bed, running across, throw on a pair of basketball shorts, logging on, well, guess what? You're going to start clicking in, clicking out, and, you know, you put in so much preparation, and you show me that, you know, yeah, you don't need to trade all day. You just need to make sure that you can target your energy based on the right things and have that focus. So I think, you know, that's one huge thing that I've noticed working with you is, you know, that half hour before market opens is probably more important than the first 10 minutes of the market being open. Well, I appreciate that. And, and one of the things that I've realized about myself is that in regards to the just overall decision making, the first hour of the market is about all I can withstand with, you know, I can make 10 to 20 major decisions in that time frame, And that's it, right? That That's all I can sustain or sustain. And 
if I get all that done and everything's accurate and I can put my full force and focus into that, then the hour is really all I need. And then I can sit back, automate my alerts, get everything hunky dory, make sure everything's set up so that I know what's going on in the market, whether I'm in front of a chart or meet in, you know, running meetings right now, we're running a meeting during market hours. And that's really helped me concentrate. And I, I love that point that you brought up because that's helped me concentrate as well on the time that I know I've set that I will be getting the moves that I need for the trades that I'm trying to deploy. And speaking with you, for example, 30 minutes ahead of the market when you're up and we're looking over everything, it's, it's fantastic, right? So, and, and with the rest of the group, because we get to, okay, market's not open. There's nothing major that we can do right now unless we're trading shares back and forth. Drink your water, drink your coffee, get hydrated, get your mind clear, right? Get everything organized. I, I think that was fantastic. That was awesome. So here's a Discord-based question. When our Discord, sure. become, when our Discord becomes paid, do you believe that $50 a month is a fair value for the information and community that we are trying to provide and offer? Yeah, you know, it's it's a hard thing is figuring out pricing on these things. And, you know, part of it is anything that's free is it really worth paying for in this market. And it's so rare to have a non-paid service at this time where you get so much value out of it. Um, you know, you see services going for, you know, 50, 100, 250 a month. Um, but what value are you getting out of it? And that's the question of, oh, well, maybe we live trade two times a week yeah, but you're trading on a you know half million dollar funded accounts. So that's not relatable. You know the big things that you know, Centurion is, you know, there's guys trading on accounts of a thousand dollars. There's guys trading on five hundred dollar accounts. There are people trading on multi million dollar accounts. But it's not the number. It's not the number of contracts. It's not the number of shares you're picking up. It is, you know, what are you pulling out that you know that well? If I can trade this well on one contract, I can trade well on five contracts. And how to scale and what to look for. Because the guy trading on a million dollar account is still looking at the same things and running the same risk that you're running. Just, you know, when you break it down in percentages, you know, a 5% loss is a 5% loss. And it still hurts the same way across all your accounts. Yeah. So, you know, for $50, you know, it's nominal, but it's enough that you got to put enough to keep you real and keep you honest and keep you invested in it. Because, you know, if it was five bucks a month, well, everyone just signs up and then you're with the value of it. Oh, I just pop in, pop out. You know, the guy to play fantasy football with, as we say, you gotta put enough in to keep you honest, but not enough that it hurts. And you know, fifty dollars, that's always comfortable for for me. Yeah, cut out your Starbucks, make it at home, pay for the Discord. So I, I appreciate that, and that's 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 great for us to, to think about and, and take into account. Uh, two more questions here for you. What would you like to have available in the Discord community? Um, I think the big thing in the Discord is, you know having people who are willing to take a little bit aside, you know, a little bit one-on-one -on -one sometimes, you know, that's something that's, it's hard. It's some of those valuable parts, but having the ability to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, have that conversation, have that ability to, you know, sort of isolate a little bit and either with an audience or without, but being able to have that open conversation, whether it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, hours and hours you don't need, but sometimes you just want to talk through. And you don't want to be that guy that just wants to throw your trades up there and say, look what I did. But sometimes you also want to throw it out there and be like, hey, this is what I did. This is what I saw. Like, are you seeing the same things I am? And, you know, for the most part, you know, it's great to see that. But, you know, having the ability sometimes to make schedule a little time, take a little this, take a little side. You know, that's one thing that's really great during market hours. I think the other thing, too, would be have those things that are outside of market hours, whether it's, you know, a book club, whether it's, you know, I'm just swapping recipes. You know, there's so much more to this. You know, we love talking cars, but we tend to talk cars when the market's chopping and we're not trading. Right. And you know, are we reading? Yeah, there's tons of readers on Discord I noticed. Do we talk about it? Not really. You know, so whether it's you know, how does highly effective people, whether it's uh, you know, reminiscence of a stock operator. You know, there's a lot that comes out, and you know, it's like book clubs. You know, everyone wants to be Jesse Livermore, but you know, most people don't even know that book or what you can get out of it or how to get the right things out of it. And then, yeah, I think stuff like that would be really good for this one. That's, that's perfect. And I, and I appreciate that very much. One of the things that we are going to be doing is uh, myself and our other traders, we're going to be running calls on Saturdays where we go over everything that we've done through the week, what our thought process was, our deployment, 
what the what the you know what the reaction was um, in regards to the market on what we decided to deploy, what the end result was, so that we can be you know we're, we're going to be going over things that we can be completely transparent with, so that it's actually actionable and helpful for those who are interested in listening in, saying okay, well you know maybe I do something a little different, but hearing Clayton's thought process through this helps me with my own strategy, and my own deployment, uh, which is what we're looking for. And then we've got multiple different types of traders that will be helping with that. So I, I, I'm happy you said that because that's something we are looking to implement immediately. So thank you. The second, the last question would be, now that you've known me for quite some time, almost a year now, what can I do to improve personally? Would love to get any kind of constructive criticism I can get. You know, I think, uh, you know, the, hard, the hardest thing for you is you're juggling so much and it's really having that focus and time when you're in something, you know, if you're hosting your call, you gotta be there. You know, you can always tell when someone's distracted, when something else is going, when the phone's going, you know, and it's, it's being present in the moment with things. And, you know, you have so much, you know, I think it's, you know, sometimes there's time to not take calls. And I know you're in the process of building and you gotta take those calls, take that yes, take that no, do this, do that. Uh, but, you know, people really notice when you're here, when you're present. And, you know, I remember I'll say it in the old days, which is not that long ago, um, just hanging out, just chatting, you know, just being there while you were playing, I think with Rocket League or whatever, you know, if it's chopping day. Um, but still, you know, it'd be like, hold on, you know, let's, let's take this aside. Let's go in and be in there. And, you know, some of the most meaningful stuff is when you're engaged. And, you know, the more you can engage, and hey, you're just going to find your times for it, whether it's balancing out things on calls, but engagement, being there, that's the number one thing that, you know, people want, people notice, so. I could not appreciate that more, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my absolute best to take that into account. I'm gonna make sure. What, so I, I had somebody else say the same thing to me, and one of the things I realized is there is a time that I set for you all, unquestionably, irregardless of what else is going on, and that's from 8:30 in the morning till about 11 o'clock in the afternoon or, or you know, pre-afternoon, and that time needs to be undisturbed. So you guys have my full attention. So I'm there and, and working on what it is that I'm working on, trading with you guys, uh, managing the consulting company and business as assets, but being there for you all, right? Because I one of the biggest issues in, I guess, some of the older places where you and I met is folks were not interactive, so they could not trade and interact and work with people and have conversations actively and do everything that they needed to do, which is something that I was really trying to make sure that I could because I love speaking with everybody and I love being interactive, but I also realize that there are times where people will talk and I know I have my camera on all the time and I'm looking over to the right because I've got a client that's texting me or I've got something else that's going on or on my other screen, there's something going on or I'm typing on Discord. I need to be focused. I, I really appreciate that and that's something I absolutely need to do. So thank you, thank you for being honest and transparent about that. I'll come back to one thing too is, you know, you are so much more transparent. So many of these, you know, discords are, they're maybe if you're lucky the voice on chat rarely is it camera on person in face forward you know so many people you know it's a cartoon bull and it's you know they're throwing out these random calls and who knows if it's a bot who knows if it's a person who knows what it is uh but part of the transparency and you see it on youtube all the time so many people put up videos but uh, you know are you lambo millionaire trader or you know who knows you never show a face you barely talk you just narrate a video well, so it's also that transparency of you're not you have, don't hide behind you know an alias. You got your name out there. You know we can find you. We know who's the real you. Um, you know, and so it's that authenticity that really is going to get you farther. I appreciate that very much, and that's how I try to operate at all times. And I don't want to hide anything. I've spent too many time, too much time in the past with people who hide just about everything that they're doing so they can protect X, Y, and Z and or keep information away because of X, Y, and Z. So I, I just try not to be that kind of person because I like building relationships I, and I, I truly do that. And that's what's provided me the capability to have a conversation like this with you, which makes me very happy and very appreciative. So thank you so much for your time. That concludes my questions. Are there any questions that you have for me before we finish up? Yeah, this, uh, you know, the one thing I'd ask is, you know, where do you want to see Centurion going to? I know, you know, there's the asset management side, there's the education side, there's the community side. Like, where, where do you really want to see this work to? So, the, I guess the Centurion group, the overarching name, which includes Centurion Growth, my business consulting asset management company, 
and then Centurion Education Group, and then whatever other entities we're going to create, whether it's a marketing entity, a real estate based entity. Uh, my goal is through the different entities that we have, um, the different companies that we have under the Centurion Group, I wanna make sure that I'm providing as much value as humanly possible within the realm that we're working in. So right now my chosen realm is the finance, is finance asset management, growing capital, and, and growth of capital over the long term, as well as short term growth of capital to help businesses. And on a very fundamental day to day basis, I can help individuals, which makes me very happy individuals that may not be able to work with the business side of the aisle, they're just trying to grow capital, um, or folks that are that have a full time job, and they just need information. Uh, and then on the software development side, I can start to build algorithms, I can start to build software that would better help me because I'm one man, there's only so much that I can do, no matter how hard I push myself. Um, with the softwares, I can really start to help others uh, and provide, for example, algorithmic deployment, algorithmic management, um, the ability to get our day traders in front of the capital of others so that they can go about their business, go about their day, work on other things. And my biggest, th my biggest I guess, point of view from this is that I know that my team, my family, uh, and my friends will be taken care of. I know that I'm going to do well in the future. I'm going to do everything I can and I will not allow myself to not succeed, which means now I'm trying to focus on knowing that and being thankful about that. My primary goal is to make sure that I provide as much value as humanly possible because I know if I'm going to do well and let's say I win the lottery through a company, what have you, um, you know, metaphorical lottery, but let's say I win the lottery through a company and I've got all the money in the world, I, and we've had this conversation before, I brought this up in the chat. If I get all the money in the world laid on my lap and I sell a company, for example, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go you know, to Boca Raton or am I gonna go to Turks and Caicos and disappear? I've already asked myself that question. I know that nothing's going to change. So I, I'm trying to maintain that discipline. So. I mean, yeah, lo love the answer, love to hear it. Um, I think I would disagree on one thing with you is uh, any in the world, might spend six months sailing, uh, you know, six months on, sitting, sitting there trading those markets because I love it. But I think the other part is, you know, six months with the family, get a catamaran, enjoy, you know, the curvy here in South Pacific. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, if we had all the money in the world, we might have a few more experiences, but right. something tells me, me and you, uh, you know, you, you grew up near, near the sea and the coast, and I grew up in the middle of the prairies. So I think boats uh, might be in our future. I'm, I'm all for it, and I'm looking forward to it. So, I don't think I'd have any problem with that whatsoever. And you know, when we can start holding conferences for the Centurion Group, bring people in, fly them in, go rent a boat for a little while, get everybody on, you know, everybody on deck. I think that would be incredible, and I, I'm very much looking forward to that, forward to that. And I think it's honestly in the near future. So, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate the question. Sure, thanks for me. I appreciate your answers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right.